What's up everyone? Today we are going to be talking about a communication and management hack that I actually just learned today. You're listening to the Venue RX podcast. I want to share with you because here at the Venue RX, we are passionate about documenting and sharing best practices for building, owning, operating, managing world-class wedding venues. And so today's topic is going to be more of a management topic. It's going to be on something that uh, relates to managing a team. And you'll hear me talk a lot about managing a team and how important it is to have a team because if you do own a venue or really any uh, business in the wedding and events industry at all, it's so important to build a team around you to actually give you the freedom to do what is the most favorite thing that you like to do in your business because let's face it there's so many different things that you need to do in your business you know when you own a business you have to have your accounting hat on you have to have your payroll hat on you have to have all of the different hats that it takes to run a business and so you know today when we talk about management we're talking about people we're talking about you know your ability to work and manage a team that allows you to focus on the things that you're best at the things that you have leverage at so that you can grow your company and this is something that I am constantly pursuing constantly getting better Better at and really passionate about but I've got to tell you a story today I am looking at you know all of the work that I have on my list to do and there's a number of things on the list that other people are supposed to be responsible for and there are things that I'm solving for them because they ran into a problem and there are some things on the list that I'm looking I'm going through and I'm starting to work on and I'm getting frustrated and I'm feeling you know as a person who prides himself on his ability to delegate and prides himself on the team that we have you know we have over 55 employees now I think we're at 57 as someone who you know we have all these employees I regularly delegate you know I, I speak on hiring and managing people and things like that and of course with the staffing company that we had before I felt frustrated and I, and I feel frustrated and so I called a good friend and you know I was talking with her about this struggle and I was just kind of venting to her and I was saying hey you know what like what am I not seeing here and she said something that I thought was really powerful and I want to share with you today and then I you know I spent some time thinking about it afterwards and realized how appropriate this is and how much I personally am going to be learning and maybe you can learn something and take something from this as well without feeling frustrated first. And so what that thing was is she said, do you have the type of culture that you let your employees know that if you are going to come back to me with a problem, you know, something that you can't control or something that you can't figure out or something, you know, some roadblock that you experienced, do you just come back and tell me, hey, this is a problem and then it stops? Or do you ask and encourage them to come back to you and say, hey, there was this problem, but I have a solution. And there's a, a very important key that she mentioned that I hadn't thought of at all because we have talked about with the team, you know, presenting problems with solutions. But she said, presenting a solution even if it's a crappy one. And I thought that was so powerful because, you know, so often I think that I condition the team to basically bring me back the problems with solutions, but the solutions need to be well thought through because they might feel like they will get shut down or, you know, said, oh, you know, me, I'll say, no, I don't think that works. And so what happens is, and what has started to happen, I think is I've put myself on this island where anytime, you know, they are experiencing a problem in the business, they come back around to me and they say, okay, let's see what, you know, his perspective is on this. And then they use me and they say, okay, once he figures it out, then we'll execute on that. And so what that started to do is give me that level of frustration because now I'm looking at my list and all of a sudden it's piled full of things that I have assigned to other people, but they haven't been able to complete because I haven't invested invested and really done an appropriate job of creating decentralized you know, control in the company. I haven't given them the permission to present me with a bad idea, a bad solution, a solution that might not be ideal. And I think when you phrase it like that, it takes the pressure off of the person who you're asking to present you with the solution because now all of a sudden they realize that even if it's a bad solution, now they have to spend some time and they have to think about it. And so that's the other piece of this here. When you make that shift and instead of just saying, you know, let me know if you have any problems, I'm here to support you, that sounds great in theory. Theory, but then when there are the problems and they do come back to you for support, now you as the boss with the centralized leadership and centralized control, now you have to go put out all of these individual fires instead of empowering your team to solve those things by themselves. And so again, the piece here that I think I personally was missing is people are coming back to me, they're saying, hey, there's this fire, there's this problem, help us solve it, instead of because I think they think that they are going to, you know, it's going to look badly on them or reflect poorly on them if they think of a solution that's not a good solution. And so what is the easy thing to do? Well, of course, just push the problem right back and don't do the hard work that it'll take to actually develop a good solution. 
It's a lot easier to just not think of a solution and throw the problem back on the person that assigned it to you rather than spend some time and take ownership of the problem and spend some time thinking about, okay, how are we gonna solve this? And so I think that's a natural human tendency and I think I've been enabling this type of behavior by being the savior in all these different instances. And I think a way that I personally can make a huge difference in my team's work atmosphere and work environment, uh, and also just how our company flows, is to give them the permission to present me with something that they might not necessarily think is perfect, but is workable. Because at the end of the day, there are no perfect plans. Things do go wrong frequently. And anyone listening to this or watching this right now absolutely knows that you know you start with some plan and then you end up deviating in, in some way to accommodate things that come up. You know, if you're building a venue, you know that it takes longer than you thought to get a building permit, or maybe it's a little bit more expensive, or maybe your marketing didn't work out the way that you thought, or maybe you invested in a platform or you know started on Google Ads and didn't really know how to operate them correctly. There's all these different things that will come up in your business. There are all these problems. You have to be willing to adjust. So when you're working with a team, this management strategy of just allowing your team to be more comfortable presenting you with an imperfect plan that you can take action on is going to be a huge, huge, huge superpower for you as a manager of your team to be able to continue growing your company, you know, continue progressing. But ultimately, that's all that it's about. You know, it's about the journey. It's about progressing and hitting those different milestones and nothing will turn out perfectly. That's something that I've definitely learned. So I'm super thankful for have, learning, have learned this today and super grateful for that friend who put that in my life. But I'm hoping that you're able to take that as well and apply that to a corner of business that you're working on. And as you're thinking about bringing on a team and as you're thinking about creating employee culture and as you're thinking about you know maybe even bringing on your first employee starting out that culture from the start you know verbalizing with your team hey if there's a problem that comes up I want you to come back to me but come back to me with a solution even if it's a bad one I want to hear the solution even if it's a bad one even if you don't feel like it'll work but I want you to take some time thinking about what we could do to solve this and then present that to me and if you have a company like I do with a lot of employees where I'm gonna to have to go back and undo some of this work that hasn't been exactly right you know get to it there's no time like the present to get started and take the first opportunity that you can to put it back on the team member back on the employee and say hey come back to me with a solution for this that isn't perfect but is workable that we can work with and it gives them the permission to not you know be stuck in in trying to figure out something that's perfect and then it gives you the freedom to know that someone else is owning that so I hope this has been helpful today if you have liked this I would absolutely love if you shared it with someone who you feel like might take advantage of it or might you know learn something from the message and let me know if you've experienced this in your company if you're a business owner I'd love to know that in the comments and thank you so much for listening today we will see you in the next video